Feminist geography is important, well, first of all, for including women's experiences. So how do women inhabit space? How do they experience public spaces? Um, so it's been integral for including women's experiences in our analysis. Um, I guess feminist geography also does other key things though. It also provides a kind of political space for people working in the academy. So meeting other feminist geographers or other women in the academy. Um, because we're still navigating predominantly sort of male-dominated spaces. Um, I guess the other way it's important is, is educating younger students on feminism and why gender matters. So. Um, early feminist work within geography kind of challenged the discipline for its failure to adequate, adequately incorporate women um, as subjects of its research. So the political motivation behind the formation of the subdiscipline feminist geography was kind of to bring to the fore women's distinctive experiences. Uh, so feminist geography then at the outset was interested in exploring how women experience space in ways that may be radically different to that of men. And over the years, geographers have produced a wide body of incredibly important work and we heard about some of this yesterday. Um, and this work has begun to look at many different aspects of women's lives. So for example, the spaces of women in work, uh, women in childcare, women in safety in public space, women in the city, etc., to name just for a few. So feminist geography then has made significant gains in getting us to think about how gender shapes our experiences of space. Um, but over the years, feminist geography has progressed and developed and kind of become more complex. So scholars have begun to ask questions about whether certain women's experiences have been overlooked or excluded from the focus of feminist geography. Um, and what they've done is begin to challenge the category of woman so asked us, who is the woman of feminist geography? So when it first started out, there's this critique that the woman of feminist geography tended to be white, Western, heterosexual, and cisgendered. So people have begun to challenge exactly what it means then by the category of woman, and have stressed the concept of intersectionality. This is something we heard about yesterday and something I know you're gonna be doing more about. So intersectionality is a term um, that was introduced in the 1980s um, by the black feminist legal scholar, Kimberly Crenshaw. And what Crenshaw is wanting us to do with the concept of intersectionality is to think about how our identities are multiple rather than singular. So we're not just one thing, we're not just our genders. So in geography then, it's been argued that certain dominant strands of feminist geography have failed to fully pay attention to different women's lives. Um, and intersectional feminists have argued that the category woman intersects with other identities. So as you can see from the slide, things like our race, class, sexuality, age, disability, nationhood, and so forth. Likewise as well, starting in the 1990s, um, geographers of sexualities and queer feminist geographers also began to challenge what is meant by the category woman. So thinking about queer women's experiences, trans women's experiences. So complicating what we mean and who the subject of feminist geography is. So it's argued then that it's vital that we begin to think about the interconnections between gender and other aspects of our identities. As only then can we begin to understand the multiple oppressions that certain women face. I would say feminist geography is many, many different things. There's a lot of different strands to it now. Um, I guess when it was first beginning to be formulated in the 70s and 80s, it had kind of quite a clear mission, which was to make sure that in our geographical analysis, we're including women's experiences. So before feminist geography, there was a tendency to just talk about a universal experience, which tended to be a white man. Um, and feminist geographers argued that we needed to include women's experiences in our analysis. Um, 
Since then, though, it's kind of progressed and developed, um, and as I was talking about earlier, intersectionality has been a really key sort of movement in feminist geography. Um, so now we have lots of branches to feminist geography. So we might have queer feminist geography, we might have critical race feminist geography. So people thinking about feminist geography and different identities. If you are doing feminist geography or what you think is feminist geography, try and remember intersectionality. I think intersectionality is really important. So if you're studying gender, don't just study it in isolation. Think about how it relates to class, race, sexuality, age, and try and have this more holistic approach to feminist geography because it's something that geographers are still sort of struggling and grasping with. So it would be good to see a generation of younger scholars who really have got to terms with these things.